Hey everyone, in this tutorial, what I want to show you how to do is create this growing vine effect using spline control in Lightwave 11.6. Now, this vine is morphing along a bone chain, which is possible in previous versions of Lightwave, but what you can do by using spline control is actually animate on top of this. So we could easily grab one of the nodes that are being controlled by spline control and you can see that we can easily manipulate that rather than going in and grabbing uh, multiple bones to do so. So let's go ahead and get started. I just want to show you how I set the vine up in Modeler because if we switch to VPR you can see that we do have a texture on here. It's a gradient um, and it's being controlled by a weight map going from 0 to a 100% and when it gets to 100%, that's where the vine is most vibrantly green. And then as it gets older, it turns to a brownish color. So let me open up that for you quickly in Modeler. So W here for weight map. We can choose the vine expanded. And you can see that we have a nice gradient going from 100% to 0%. And then if we switch to the M tab for morph, you can see that we have the base and then shrink. And to do that, I just use the stretch tool and stretch it all the way down. Uh, really quickly, I want to show you how to create the gradient because I actually used a script that was written by Ken9 and that gives me an opportunity to show you how the Lightwave plugin database is now on the Lightwave 3D website. So if you go to lightwave3d.com under community we have plugins and you can see here's all the free plugins from various artists we can actually go to authors and we can search for Ken9 right here. And I downloaded a script called where's that Wait Outward. And it's very useful for situations like this tentacle where it easily will give you a gradient weight map from 100% to 0 and even from 0 to negative 100%. So download that. Actually, I'll just get rid of the weight map. So let's go to the weight map, vine expanded. Under the map tab, I'm just going to delete this map and we'll create a new one. So you can see now we don't have any um, red color on here, which represents uh, any value from one to 100%. Now what we wanna do first is come to the top of this and let's select the first few polygons because that's what the script needs in order to get started and then it's going to expand along the object all the way down to the bottom. So with the top few polygons selected, let's go to the Utilities tab, L script, select Weight Outward, and we're going to create a new weight map. Let's just call this Vine. And the original selection's weight is going to be 1, representing 100%, and the last step down here at the bottom is going to be 0, and we want it to expand and the max step scan just means that it'll automatically go to the bottom of the object. So let's hit OK. And you can see now that we have a perfect gradient weight map from 100% all the way down to 0%. So let's save this object. And let's send it over to Layout. Let's go to the back view by hitting the 1 key. And let's select our object. And what we first want to do is start adding bones uh, going along this vine to make a bone chain. So let's go to the Setup tab, and let's add a bone. Hit OK. Y for Rotate. And let's rotate that 90 degrees on the heading, and negative 90 on the pitch. Let's turn on Bone X-Ray so we can see through our object and then make out the bones. Let's go to the properties for that bone and change the rest length to about 2 meters. Now we need to add some child bones uh, that are attached to this bone. An easy way to do that is to hit the equals key and then hit enter and then continually do that following up the vine. One more. Okay, so now let's go to the scene editor. Let's select all of our bones and hit the R key to rest those bones at their current state at frame 0. You can see now if you rotate them, the vine is deforming with them. Let's undo that. 
what we want to do is go to the vine object, hit P for properties, and let's change the subdivision order to last. Now we want to set up spline control. To do that, we're going to add a null by hitting control N, and let's call the first null spline. And let's give it an item shape as a box. And just increase the size a little bit, maybe about two meters. Is that okay? And that's just so we can uh, grab it a little easier. Now we want to clone that by hitting Control C and hit OK. Let's go to the properties and get rid of the item shape. And then let's go to items and rename that to be node. Okay. And we're going to keep the first null at the current position as spline, except we're going to clone it. And let's move it up about five bones, clone it again, and up some more, and control C one more time, and right there. Okay, so now let's go into our scene editor, and let's select those five nodes hitting shift and select the first node. Click and drag it underneath spline to parent all those nodes to the spline. Then we want to go and select all of our bones, hit M for motion options, and the spline control is going to be set to that spline that we just created. So now if I select any one of those nulls, you can see that I can very easily manipulate and deform that vine rather than going in and grabbing five different bones to do the same task. This really speeds up uh, your workflow. So let's get a cool shape going here. Okay, so something like that. And let's turn off bone x-ray for now. So now we want to utilize that morph that we created and morph along this path. So let's go into the vine and hit P for properties. Let's go to the deform tab and select morph mixer. And you can see here we have our shrinking morph from zero to 100%. Now you can see that it is getting a bit wonky. That's because we need to change a setting in the bone properties panel. So let's select one of the bones, hit P and this is a global setting for all bones in this bone chain, it's going to be use morphed positions. What that'll do is tell the morph to follow the path of those bones. So you can see that it is morphing as you would expect now. So at frame zero, let's go to 100%, and let's say around frame 90, we want it to be zero. So now if we play through this, See that we're getting a nice animation along our path. All right. So that's as easy as that. Now let's utilize that weight map that we created with uh, Ken9's plugin from the plugin database. Let's go into VPR. And under the surface editor, we're going to go to the color texture tab. Let's just exit out of that. And I'm going to change the layer type to a gradient, and the input parameter is going to be weight map with the weight map that we created called the vine. So the first key, I want to make a brownish color, about like that. And let's create another key right around this area as the same color brown. And the last key is going to be more of a green color. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Huge texture. So you can see just with that simple weight map, we have a nice, uh, more realistic vine now. We can even go into the bump channel. Let's zoom in here. Open up the texture editor for that, and let's make this layer type a procedural texture of turbulence. And you can see that we can shrink it down. Let's do maybe. 500 millimeters 
maybe a little less, 300 millimeters. And that'll just make it a bit more rough. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's get out of VPR. And I'm going to set this up one more time so that you can see uh, how to control when to start the morph. So let's go back to frame zero and let's load our object in again. So let's add a bone chain again. Go to setup, add a bone. Okay. And let's turn bone x-ray on again. Rotate it 90 degrees on the heading. Negative 90 on the pitch. P for properties, let's change the rest length to 2 meters. And just so we don't forget, when we're planning on doing the morph, let's check used morph positions. And just hit equals enter to add child bones. Okay. Let's go to the scene editor. And we want to select all those bones that we just created. Tap the R key to rest them at their current state at frame zero. And we can see that that is deforming our object. But let's not forget to go into the new vines properties and set the subdivision order to last. Okay. Now what we want to do is create our spline control. So let's add another null by hitting control N. And we're going to call this spline 002. Twirl down the edit menu and let's make this shape a diamond. About two meters and hit OK. All right, now let's clone that, hitting control C. And let's go into the properties and get rid of the item shape. And back to items and let's rename this one node 002. Hit OK. We're going to keep that one in its current position, clone it, and let's move this up about five bones, and again, and again, and one more time. Okay, so now we have to go back into the scene editor. And let's select our five nodes parent them to the spline, select our new bone chain that we just made, M for motion options, and the spline control is now going to be spline 002. Okay. And we can move that entire object by selecting the spline. See that it'll move everything. And let's just test this out by moving our nodes around. And you see that everything works as you would expect. Okay, so let's move this into place. And we'll actually come along here to where we want this vine to start growing. And let's just start it early on. Let's say right there. Y for rotate. And let's rotate this into place. Okay, hit enter and create the key at frame zero. Hit the delete key and delete the key at frame 47. And let's make a weird shape out of this one now. So at frame zero, let's skip through our nodes. Okay, move that up. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is come to the point where we want this guy to start morphing. So let's say right about there. Eh, maybe around frame. We could just start it at, say, frame 40. So let's go to the object properties. Hit the P key. Go to the deform tab and let's add the morph mixer. So at frame 40, we want it to be 100%. And at frame 0, we want it to be 100%. And this is automatically creating keys. Then we can come to frame 120 and have it be 0%. And you can see that at frame 40, it now starts growing. 
Okay, but you can see that we are having it be morphed in the opposite direction before frame 40. That's because we need to go into this envelope here. And let's just add some tension on these two keyframes. So right click, drag out a selection box, and then type in one in the tension. You can see now that it's not morphing backwards. All right, and that's pretty much it. See that we are now easily animating this vine along the bone chain, which is possible in previous versions of Lightwave. But now with the added spline control, you can very easily select those nodes and shift them around without worrying about um, grabbing a whole bunch of different bones to do so. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.